Hello, and welcome to the channel Gaming Like a Noob. I'm the noob, and I call myself Sansomi. So, time for the fourth season. Let's have a little summary here about what has happened during this uh, summer break. Um, this season, and um, what players has been arriving, and uh, if I've gotten anybody out and stuff like that and if there is any future things going on let's just go through the team and um, yeah and the next episode will be the number one episode of the fourth season so we had a quite a good season last season <clears throat> uh, ended up um, let's see here if we can get into this and we take last season. We ended up in a qualification here or playoff in the fifth position, which was way above my expectations. I was hoping for a place somewhere in the middle. I was expecting somewhere around here, but we ended up playing for a playoff and that was super. But what was even better than that was that I won my very first trophy. If we take a look in here, we can see um, FA Trophy, yeah, the build base FA Trophy and our season and we go to the final and we see that we won on penalties. If you remember that, very, very happy at the end there, winning that game. Um, I remember the nerves I had, so yeah. It's been a while since I recorded any Welling United uh, episodes because I did uh, muster away the entire season somewhere in January and then placed them all on uh, the YouTube. So uh, yeah, it's going to be nice coming back to, to Welling. I missed it and uh, you haven't noticed anything because it's been released every... Tuesday, so yeah, but I like to to try and muster up the time to to record a couple of episodes. Um, the more the better, and then release them every Tuesday. So um, <clears throat> this is recorded. Um, well, just this episode is recorded the fourteenth of March, and. Um, one thing that I would like to t to talk about that is outside of Football Manager, it's in the real world, and that is Chelsea. Now having huge problems because um, because of Abramovich, and I've always said this when it comes to to um, these re rich people owning football teams. Um, I don't really care uh, that uh, the rich people do uh, does own these football teams. I think it's nice that they put money into the game. Uh, so uh, even though a team like City has run away from Manchester United, um, um, being Manchester United being my favourite team, uh, I still don't see any fault in in. Uh, these rich people uh, owning the clubs and so on and so forth but i think there should be uh, perhaps uh, some stricter rules and some leaner rules uh, and what i say about what i mean about that is that i don't care <clears throat> if they use their own money in uh, i mean if they want to buy a player uh, let's say they want to buy Mbappe to uh, let's say West Ham and the owner has the money but the club uh, does not of course uh, but let's say the owner have the money and uh, there comes in a rich oil shake or something and I think that he can use his own money. He doesn't have to put it in a sponsor money or something like that. It just... He can use his own money to buy the player, get the player to West Ham. But it's, when it comes to the contract, 
there is two things I would like to, to mention there. I think the signing on fee could be something that the owner paid the player. Straight up, no tax evasion or something like that. Straight up, they could give him a humongous amount of money as a signing on fee. But the salary, the, the money that has to be paid out every week is something that the club needs to be able to handle even if the owner the next day says, no, nah, I'm sick of this. I'm leaving this club. And um, yeah. The, the club still needs to be able to pay his salary. Um, that's what I think. Uh, I don't know if we can can see, look, have a look here. Let's go into... Let's have a look at, uh, well, that's typical. They've been relegated, I see, in West Ham. There they are. Let's have a look at their captain, Declan Rice. His uh, salary is £64,000 per week. And I know there are players with £300,000 and stuff like that, or even more, 500 and stuff like that. But... <clears throat> this is the salary they should give Mbappe. And then the owner that is filthy rich then and um, Mbappe should agree on a signing on fee which he will feel is compensation for not getting more more wages than that. And, and um, that... that the, those money could be taken out of the rich person's pockets directly, so it doesn't have to go through the club, um, in my mind. But you need to keep the salary down on these clubs, because if he gets bored, or like now when Abramovich has to leave Chelsea, has to sell it and everything, and there might not be anybody that come close to the amount of money that Abramovich has that gets it then everything could go straight down um, so yeah that's why I feel that, that, that those rules should be implemented so yeah but I don't care as I said I don't really care how much money these rich people put into the game as long as it doesn't affect the clubs in in a financial situation. It shouldn't be like, I'm building a club here, so I'm taking in 10 players that earns a huge amount of money, and, and, and as long as I'm owner of the club, I keep on playing their, paying their salaries. It doesn't matter that the club losing money because I just put money into the club. No, that's not the way it should go. Give them give them the, the, the freedom to be able to put up the transfer fee and to put up a big signing on fee, but keep all the salaries in a way that the, it's, it's manageable for the club, even if that rich owner disappears. And now enough talk about that. That's what just what I had to say about um, the things like now that is going on in in Chelsea. So uh, at the time that I record this, I have no idea what's what's uh, going to happen there. Abramovich is still the owner. Um, they are ceasing his financials by day or whatever. So yeah, <clears throat> we have no way of knowing. So let's go through what we have done this summer. I don't really recollect uh, everything, but uh, yeah. I do know that we have signed some players, so maybe we should go through that first. We're going to transfer and history. And yeah, this are signed this year, but we think we have a couple of players that has been signed at the end of the season here. Yes, like this one, Bujang. Ismaila Bujang, a 70-year-old left midfielder. Couldn't keep my eyes on uh, my hands off him because of that 19 there. I'm hoping that he will be a good player. 
but you never know. Tommy Wood, uh, I think he was signed before though, because he signed um, in March. So we we've had to have those players. So only Ismaili, Ismaili, Imaila Bojang has signed. Um, during the last end of last season so who do we have the rest of players that we have got it into we have Corey Andrews a striker that um, I'm hoping should be doing something for this for us um, last in, in Wimbledon is of the is 25 years old so not a, a uh, per, he's not a, a young young player, but he's still not old. He's got a very good acceleration, which uh, and good pace, and an okay finish, which uh, I need to try and find a way to use him in the best possible way. His PA is uh, superb rating for the senior team for this, and his but he's what is good rated for the senior team right now. So, yeah. Then we have Oscar Taranzi, another left defender. Now I've bought a lot of left defenders in this game, but look at all these yellow numbers here on him. And I, I just couldn't... The, the, the sad part is the determination, only four. And I, I think I didn't really look at that when I signed him. I was getting a little, conf, uh, little hypnotized by all the yellow... Um, numbers that he had but but I, I hope he he will be good enough um to take a position in the team and then we have daniel grimshaw now look at these numbers that's really good um and he looks good out here as well maybe a little mental problems with flair off the ball and stuff like that but yeah other than that he's, he's a very good player it looks like and it's a goalkeeper um He's 25. I know, was it um, Toby Egan? Yeah, that we have that played very, very well last season. So it's going to be hard for this one to take that position and come in and take that uh, position. Got a contract until 26, so that's a three year contract. And uh, yeah, so. Looking forward to that. Uh, hasn't made, if you look at his career, he hasn't been playing many games. He played seven year games for Hemel Hampstead Town back there, but other than that, he hasn't really played any games. Um, um, yeah, it seems like I've used him in three uh, friendlies here now, uh, where he's let two in and one clean sheet then. So, um, yeah. And then we have a Daniel Bruce on loan. Now, this is a midfielder, attacking midfielder right. I know that we had some problems on the right midfield, if I'm not mistaken. I think we had problems on both left and right, but mainly right, I think, uh, we had a problem. So, I loan this player and in hope that he is good enough... <laughs> To prove something for us, we're taking him from Burton Albion. Uh, so, yeah. Interesting. Um, to see what will happen there. He's an Englishman, so, yeah. And we had Jude Obadje. That's the left midfielder. And he, he's got some really interesting numbers here and here and here but he has long throws penalty taking he shouldn't can't be among the penalty taker but other than that he's his positioning is off but other than that he's really good numbers and and um yeah look at this as well he's a very 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 a promising player and uh, has the potential to be a star player in my team now we're not going to get him um since he's He's contracted to Bristol City and he most likely going to sign a new contract with them. But we're going to try and get him if he doesn't sign because his contract is going out in, in the summer. So if 
if if uh, in January if he's not signed a contra new contract with Bristol City in the in 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 January or something like that, we we're certainly going to try and get him to sign for us. But uh, yeah, I, I guess that's not going to happen. He looks way too good to to not uh, to be giving us the opportunity. Now, I think we have a couple of others that we are trying to to lend here. We have Harry Jones from Swansea that we are trying to to uh, bring into the club. Uh, he had a lot of yellow numbers here as well. Um, a defender, right, which we do, do need. And uh, yeah, Joseph, um, Joseph Helsek. I think we... we sort of try to put a couple of players out on that yeah both of them are out on that like like uh what should i say oh freezes my brain freezes now both of them because we want at least one um right defender um because we do have a little problem there so so we want to, but i'm trying to put two on loan here and do we get both maybe but then we have they can both play on the left as well so not going to be any problems using those players but i didn't want to just put all my bar my eggs into one basket and trying to get just one of them it's better to try with both and maybe one of them say no and one of them say yes i, I don't we just have to see um if it doesn't if we don't get any of them then i don't know what to do but uh, then we're going to have to play with the players that we've got. So, yeah. Adrian Manning is um, on his way out of the club. Um, his number is not looking very good. So, let's have a look, a look at the squad then. We have a couple of goalkeepers. We have Daniel Grimshaw. We have Hubert Grasnik. We have Toby Egan. Jamie Emery. Josh Lane. Those are the goalkeepers. So now to Tom Hadler. Tom Hadler has been sold. Let's see. Did we get any amount of money for him? Um, Tom Hadler. What, what in God's name? Why can't I see Tom Hadler then? Or did we never buy him in this game? Maybe that was my... You can see here. Very pleased with financial aspect in the releasing. We released Tom Hadler on a free transfer. All right. I thought he was quite all right, but he didn't want to sign a contract. Maybe it was that that made it. And he didn't get very many. He did that season. He was tremendous for us, but <clears throat> it was one of the reasons that we went up that season and then toby egan started the season so good last season and and i couldn't i didn't get the i couldn't take him out of the team and um because uh things were going so good uh, compared to what i thought we were we were going to go so so yeah you see he's been playing quite a lot of games during my time as manager here these four seasons or three seasons we are supposed to enter into the fourth season this time now if we see here we can see right defenders we have Dylan Thislin who isn't very good but I have a high hope because you can see here potential he has an excellent rating but he's not there he's far from there so that's why I want to lend in some good right defenders we have um Udra Uluf Uluf Uluf. I, I i'm sorry if i butcher those names i'm certainly not good at at foreign names i i, I beg everybody pardon about that but he's only good writing so we we do need a right defender and uh but we do have some potential stars in charlie smith here as a left defender, and I think we have, um, what was it with Harry Breathwhistle? Yeah, he was an, also a very high potential 
ability to so it would be good to 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 get a, a landing in a really good um uh, right defender so that they can learn from it and i remember dan butler was a really good left defender as well yes he was uh yeah and joseph rabbits was our promising player still 21 is have trained very good during the summer break here or during the preseason. I think he's probably the one, if I don't get to lend those two players, he's probably the player that is going to be first choice as a left defender, definitely. Rive Brown was a player that I've been trying to get rid of because he gets injured so extremely often that it's ridiculous and he's still out for about three months there so yeah and then we have a lot of um defensive midfielders and i think all of these i've been very pleased with i mean look at the numbers on this one and i think this is probably our best player and this one is really good as well and Boateng is also a very good. So in the center of the midfield, we have some really good players. We have this uh, Nur Huzin, uh, the Afghan player, uh, who's been actually playing in the Afghan national team. Very good player as well. And um, Adrian Manning, I think we are selling him, right? so yeah so ben gladwin i remember that one as well yes yeah, that was the one that we used on the right midfield right and uh yeah but i think we have better now with the players that we had the daniel bryce but bryce is injured so he's out for another four weeks so but ben gladwin will most likely start the season here for us as well Nathan Payne is suspended, so no right midfielder. So it's going to be Ben, Ge ben Gladwin, most likely, that plays on the right side there in the Premier. So we have uh, some promising players here. We just, we're still going to figure out whether Jake Fisher is going to become something here in the club. He's 18 now, so he should be blossoming if he really have something. Tommy Wood, one of the players that we signed before this season, as I said. And, um, yeah, Oscar Thorne, who made a very good uh, season last year. You can have a look at his career here. He made 39 games, 28 goals, 5 assists, and 8 times player of the match. So he was probably one of our absolute best players, Oscar Thorne, last season. So yeah uh the question is we can go into him again because i don't know he signed all the way through to 2026 so that's a good contract for with him 300 pounds a week so yeah but uh, the chance or the risk is that 2025 comes and we'll need to sell him because he's not going to be able to we're not going to be able to afford signing a new contract with him and we probably won't get very much money because we are where we are, way down in the system. Now, money. Here's our financial situation at the at the moment. <clears throat> we are actually in the whites. Sixty nine thousand pounds in the white. That's good, but we did lose a thousand pounds this month and uh, yeah you can see here that we have a transfer budget this season of 39,849 and we do have a wage budget of 17,072 17, pounds per week and we are at 13,283 so yeah it looks all right financially at this at this situation if we can manage to get something out of this uh, with these players that we've got, um, then I'm pretty sure that we will be doing good financially. If we can keep playing as a top team in this division this year, uh, hopefully reaching the playoffs again, um, 
not having the season that I was expecting us to have last season, because then we will be fighting for survival. But if we can have a good season this season as well, we should be able to make some money this season. Unless we start out really bad and win, and I get panic and, and uh, try to find players to improve, whether it's on loan or buying players or signing free players and stuff like that. Um, that's, we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, hopefully we don't get into that competitions, uh, the league we haven't, haven't started yet. So that's not vis visible. We're going to come into the fourth qualification, qualification, qualifying round and, um, FA trophy. We're going to enter in the third round in the FA trophy. We are holders of that trophy let's see if we get into history and past winners welling united do well have welling united has not even been in a final before so i brought them to their very first final and i won it that's so nice now we are not known for going very far in the FA Trophy, uh, FA Cup, so, yeah. Scouting, I don't know, I don't have, think I have very much there. Maybe I have somebody on the short list that could be, I do have a lot of players on the short list, but, uh, yeah, most of them are players that don't want to join me or, yeah, just uh, might not be that good or cost too much. I know we were after this one, and he's signed for Birmingham now, which is a bit of a bit sad. Um, he was able to leave. Um, no, that's not the player. Who do I? Is that in some game that I play? No, they're in Dulwich. Wasn't this in this game that Dulwich had a right midfielder? that we wanted to uh, have he was from poland as well it was very good yeah of course it was from in this transfer let's see look at their transfer history out oh, nobody has left this season yeah i think this is the one he's he actually went to newcastle this one so this is the one that we tried to sign for two or three seasons here but he didn't want to go to us now he's signed for Newcastle, so and he plays in Newcastle's under twenty three. So really promising player, I guess. And um, too bad we didn't get him. He could have been a right mid. No, he's striker here, but but I think we play, would have played him as a right midfielder, um, <clears throat> which is one of the weak points. Have been has been one of the weak points since I took over this club, as I can recall. So I don't know if there is much more to go through. We haven't been able to make it into a professional club. Um, this is the club uh, info side here, where we have the new trophy, the FA trophy here. And this is, of course, quite new as well. The, these two trophies is what I've won, and this what was what the club had before I came color glass league premier division that's way down so the two biggest trophies that they have is the two trophies that i've brought them so interesting and um so what's our goals for this season well of course my goal first of all is to end up among the playoffs um second goal is to try and and retain that trophy, FA trophy, of course. And the third one uh, will be to go as try to reach a place in the FA Cup where we get a, a Premier League or a Champions League team to face away so that we can get some real money into the club because the next goal for the club is to become professional so that we can train um 
so that the player can players can train all, uh, all the time here i mean when we look at training we we have a lot of unavailable here and if we become professional all these will be available and that's our first goal outside of where we will where we will try to end up in this season so first of all we want to end up in the top of the table or, or, or in the top half i should say of the table in order to to um retain the players and and everything and uh, after that as i said uh, try to retain the, tro the tro trophy fa trophy and trying to go as far as possible to get some really good team away i mean a dream would be to face off manchester united at old trafford because that is something that would bring us a lot of money maybe even the money that is needed for us to go from an amateur club to a professional club so yeah that's what we are aiming for so that is of course our our, our uh, another a big big um, um goal for this season to become professionals and um other than that is it is of course just facilities try to improve all of these um if we get the money in and stuff like that but first of all we need to get to a professional because i think the professional level is better than the than to aim for the the facilities to become as good as possible so yeah i think we've gone through what we had all the th things that we need to talk about before the season starts so in the next episode which will be uh, the number one episode number one of this fourth season we're going to start off with the four games chester Epsfleet's united havant and waterlooville and gateshead so that's going to be an interesting and i think that scott dow is still manager of of this one yeah scott dow is still manager of gateshead and we remember him he played an important part for us um he played in the 2021 he was our one of our most important player i thought he was the most important player i gave him a four-year contract uh, i gave him a ridiculous salary to stay and then he hangs his boots up when the season is over which made me a bit furious to be honest i, I felt uh, bamboozled um but I then signed him as a coach, and now he's going to. Now he's left us there as well. So, yeah, we'll just have to see what um, going to happen here. So, but yeah, without further ado, I think we are done with this uh, preseason episode. This season four episode zero where we talk about things that are happening uh, as i said i'm really hoping that these two will go through that we get harry jones and joseph hosek um as loaned players to us um it will be very very nice if we can we did miss out on finn stevens that was another right defender that i would that i preferred that i thought was just the ones uh, the, the one that i wanted but uh, he didn't want to sign for us so the, the the chance is of course humongous that these two players will say the exact same thing i'm not willing to go down all the way down to welling and play but let's hope for it let's hope that that is not true so i'm just going to end this episode by saying uh, Thank you for watching and uh, do like, subscribe and all that nice stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, 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 bye.